Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Hoyt Archery, Muddy Outdoors, Fuse Accessories, Trophy Rock, Frigid Forage, Scott Archery, Cabela's, Rocket Broadheads, Woods Zero Turn Mowers, Bloodsport Arrows, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Scentmaster, Yeti Coolers, Scentlock, and Nikon. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. On today's episode, I'm going to start by putting out my trophy rocks for this year. It's that time of the season where the bucks are starting to grow their antlers now. The does are starting to um, reach that point in their cycle also where they need a lot of mineral input. The fawns are growing inside of them and soon they'll be lactating. So mineral is a really important part of the diet of a deer during this time frame from about roughly sometime in March. You know, I'm into early April now, so I've missed the window just a little bit, but uh, right on through the summer until about the middle of September or so. After that point, after the bucks have shed their velvet and the fawns are you know, weaned and starting to move away from the does, uh, the mineral requirement starts to drop a little bit in the deer and they don't, they don't utilize the mineral as much. But this is a critical time for them. Uh, it's an important time to get the mineral out. We've got the trophy rocks in, in a good supply and I've got a number of spots on the farm where I need to get those out. Also on today's episode, we've got another cooking tip from Chef Aaron Neal. And this time he's gonna be talking about how to make a great meal out of turkey breast. With the turkey season coming in, it's a good time to start talking about turkey recipes. All right, so let's go down and get these trophy rocks out. I'm gonna talk a little bit along the way about the locations that I pick and then uh, the value that I see beyond just the mineral uh, utilization by the deer, but also getting the trail camera pictures of the deer during the summer and why that's so important. spots that I choose for putting my rocks out are usually high traffic areas and uh, I only put the rock out for this time frame that I've talked about already and I pull it back in and uh, you know keep the the farm mineral free from about the middle of September right on through about now it's not legal to hunt over mineral sites in Iowa you got to stay quite a long distance away from them you can't hunt trails leading to them so there's some pretty tight uh, regulations on you know where they can be in relation to your tree stands and so forth so the best thing for me is, is just to completely get them out of here. Don't create that uh, kind of a lasting spot where the deer are constantly digging every year. So I put my, my rocks on top of stumps. We've got a lot of stumps on this farm from all the TSI that we've done. So there's lots of places in those high traffic areas where I can find a stump to put the rock on. Some people put them on actual rocks so that they, you know, they're not actually going down into the dirt. They're not melting, melting away quickly. Because if you set them on the ground, you're gonna start to get a little pit there. And every time you set the rock in that pit, it's going to hold water when it rains and it's going to soften up the rock and it's going to tend to last a little bit. You know, it's not going to last as long. So I like putting them on stumps. Uh, they last quite a while. Um, and uh, like I said, I can pull them off there and it's no big deal. At the end of the summer, they're gone. This location is down in the bottom where I've done quite a bit of work over the past uh, season or so, preparing a small food plot here another one there, then there's another one past it, then another one past it. So it's a really cool location on this farm. Uh, really challenging to hunt down in here, but it's a, a nice uh, part of the sanctuary for the deer. A lot of deer uh, congregate and live down in this area of the farm. So that's why I want to make sure I've got a mineral site down in this bottom. There's a heavy trail that comes up out of that ditch, and I've got a stump right on the edge of that. In fact, it's the spot where a couple of years ago, a couple of summers back, I was getting pictures of the double G4 buck uh, coming into the trophy rock. So that was, you know, it's got some good vibes going for it. And there's a couple other bucks I know living down here that we should get some nice pictures of this summer. And that's the nice thing about the trophy rock. You know, if you're putting corn out, trying to get pictures of deer during the summer, you can spend a lot of time and money running that corn. Uh, but the, the mineral, because it's not visited by raccoons or birds or anything like that, it lasts a lot longer, it's more selective, it really only just attracts the deer. So you can run a trail camera over a trophy rock during the summer and you can get lots of good pictures, get a rough idea of what you've got on the farm to hunt for that season and uh, kind of get yourself off on the right foot. So the rock serves two purposes. Uh, I don't really know what's in it. You know, I, I can read the label like everybody else, but uh, the biologists that really understand deer, they say that this is what they need. So. Uh, it's important for the deer's health. And so for myself as a hunter, I'm excited about having locations on the farm where I can get trail camera pictures of the deer during the summer. This 
spot behind me is one of the locations on the farm that we frost seeded this spring. So we'll come back and check it in about uh, two or three weeks. I don't see anything popping up yet, but our soil temperature hasn't been high enough yet, I'm sure, to really get this stuff germinated and going. Uh, it's supposed to be nice over the next few weeks though, so we should start to see some clover popping in here. This was a brassica plot last winter, and uh, frost seeding clover into these brassicas is a great way to continue that food plot. And it even gives you an opportunity if you want to go back again that fall or late summer and uh, till under the clover and put brassicas back in there again, you can kind of double crop it. And the clover does give you some nitrogen credit uh, in the soil so you don't have to put on quite as much nitrogen fertilizer when you're growing your brassicas the next, uh, next rotation. So it uh, works really good. I like frost seeding on top of these big and beastie plots. And uh, I'm sure we'll do plenty of that over the next couple of years. But like I said, we'll come back and check this one out in a few weeks and uh, see how the clover's doing. You want to have about uh, 80 acres or so per mineral site. And I think that's just a rough standard. I think if you've got a lot of timber, you know, a lot of habitat and a lot of deer, you might want to be a little bit more concentrated with the number of mineral sites that you use. You know, maybe one to 40 acres in that situation. Um, this farm will probably end up with about one to 80. And that still gives me quite a few spots. Lots of deer will be impacted by the mineral and give me a lot of spots during the summer to uh, pull trail camera photos. So just something to keep in mind, um, anywhere between 40 to 80 acres per mineral site. I've already said that I prefer the Trophy Rock itself for a number of reasons on this farm, but the company makes a granulated uh, mineral as well called 465. And for anybody that likes a ground up mineral, if they've got a mineral site established or whatever, uh, they also make this product. Uh, I've got one spot where I'll be putting that out, but otherwise, Everything else on the farm is going to be the trophy rock. I'm Chef Aaron Neal back here on Midwest Whitetail. Here in Mid-Missouri, we're getting geared up for turkey season. With the help of my buddy Aaron Warbritton, we got a Osceola ostrich breast here, as I call it. It's the biggest turkey breast I've ever seen. <laughs> so I had to trim it down a little bit. Today we're gonna do a wild turkey cordon bleu, and to sauce it up, we're gonna put a honey maple bourbon glaze on it, and it's gonna be really good. Real good. Do this without cutting your hand off. You wanna open up your turkey breast like a book after you cut it down the middle. Then you're gonna take your saran wrap here, so you can get it unstuck. Lay this here. Then you're gonna take another piece. What I'm doing here is like, well you don't get a perfect cut when you go through it. There's gonna be some lumps, thicker parts of the breast and the other parts. You can use whatever you want, a rolling pin, meat mallet, can of corn, as long as this thing gets flat and even all the way across. Today what I'm gonna stuff my breast with is black forest ham and pepper jack cheese. That's just my preference. You can put any kind of cheese or ham you want into it. And for our glaze, there's gonna be brown sugar, maple syrup, honey, apple cider vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, bourbon, and we're gonna use a stick of butter. Don't forget the orange. Makes the sauce really good. Now, when you're assembling your turkey breast, you wanna put your ham right in the center of the breast. You wanna leave the edges open so you get a good seal. And then once you get your ham laid down, you wanna lay your cheese the same way with the edges open. This will keep it from oozing out everywhere and it'll also, like I said, keep you a good seal on it when you go to rolling this. Now I'm going to take a paper towel and just dab the edges, get the moisture off. That'll also help it seal. turn her long ways and you start to roll and you want to keep it tight 
Just roll, roll, roll. Anytime your stuff starts to slide, you can just pull it right back in. It ain't no big deal. Now, to keep this nice and tight, we're going to take some butcher's twine. Now, you can get this at any grocery store. Just go back there and talk to the guy in the butcher shop area and tell him you need some twine. Just tie your knot. Sure, she's getting tight. To a motor holder. Now, a little salt. Go to get your pan hot, put a little oil in here. You don't need much oil, just enough to grease the bottom. You're gonna uh, get your pan hot, probably medium to high heat. You wanna be able to hear that sizzle whenever you put your breast on there. Also getting my saucepan hot so I can melt my butter. Now you're searing this turkey breast for two reasons. One reason is to get that brown color on there, that's good to make it have good flavor, but it also it'll help seal in all the moisture in the, inside the turkey so it won't get dried out. You're going to get this evenly brown on all edges approximately three to four minutes on each side. Now in the meantime, I got my oven on and I had it preheated at 400 degrees. She's turning out looking real good. Once you get your turkey breast browned on all sides, you go ahead and put it in your oven. Now you wanna cook this in any poultry until it reaches 160 degrees in internal temperature. Now while that's in the oven, we're gonna work on our glaze here. Now it doesn't really matter which order you put this stuff in, but I put my butter in first. Y'all, I mean, you wanna melt your butter first, obviously. Then I'm gonna have to go ahead and throw in this brown sugar. This glaze is gonna be more than enough to cover this turkey breast. So what you can do, you can get a container and put it in your refrigerator. It'll keep for several weeks. I mean, it'll go good on anything. You can put it on ribs, you can put it on, you know, when that people ain't looking, I've been known to dip my hot dogs in it. <laughs> Then we're going in with our maple syrup. Oh yeah. You smell that goodness. Turn the heat down just a tire. Then we're gonna go with our honey. Apple cider vinegar. What's your Worcestershire sauce? How okay, you say it? Worcestershire. And it's hard to have a bourbon glaze without your good old bourbon in here. Now you're gonna let this come to a simmer. And let it get thick. Well, almost forgot. Put your little orange juice in here, it makes it pretty dang good. You're gonna reduce your glaze until it gets nice and thick. You want it to be sticky, just like the syrup. It may take five minutes and make 10 and I don't know. Once you let this reduce a while, you wanna go ahead and get it off the heat and let it cool down a little bit. That'll help it thicken up. You don't wanna reduce it too much because it'll bring out too much of the cider and it'll be too stout for the sauce. Now while you're cooking this in the oven, you wanna take your glaze. And 
put a little on there. Oh yeah. Spread that glaze over there evenly. She ain't quite there. She's at 100 degrees, shooting for 160. Be a good time to go ahead and put a little more glaze on it. Now, if your glaze is, I like to leave my glaze a little thin because it'll thicken up in the pan, but if you want it thicker, you can just add some more sugar. It ain't no big deal. Sweetness ain't gonna hurt nobody. Oh, look at her. Now I pulled this turkey when it hit about 150 degrees. The reason I do that is because the carryover heat will bring it up to 160. If you wait till it cooks to 160, in the oven it'll end up just drying out it won't have any moisture left so we pull it out and set it on your cutting board and let it rest for you know five or ten minutes it took about 40 minutes give or take a few minutes there to get this up to 150 degrees now that it's set for a while i'm going to go ahead and open it up and see what she looks like see how that glaze crusted on there it's all goodness people make sure you cut your strings off See what she looks like. Look at all that ham and cheese. Wild turkey. Cordon Bleu, honey maple bourbon glaze, folks. It turned out better than I thought it would. I'm gonna let these boys get a plate. Until next time, I'm Chef Aaron Neal. This is Midwest Whitetail. Good luck and good hunting. Well, that's it for this week. I appreciate you joining me. I'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.